Congratulations on the new position, Danielle. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. All right, I think we have everybody joining on now. So you guys are all familiar with this process, so I'll be really short and sweet. Um, I am giving you all permission to record audio and video on your end, but we are also recording just in case you need those files afterwards. Um, and we'll try and stick to the 40 minutes for the session, um, but I'll kick it over to Patrick and Chris to kind of um, keep, keep an eye on time and just cycle through the questions um, round robin style. So feel free to kick it off whenever you're ready. Absolutely. Yeah. I Sorry, are all of the, the fans here? I'm, I'm seeing Arnie and Chris and Lacey. Are we, we good to go? I might have missed that. Awesome. Sounds good. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, you know, Chris and I are, are excited to do these. Uh, we love doing these and, and chatting with you guys. Uh, we're going to dive right in uh, to make sure that we've got time to get to everything. Uh, so yeah, we will start off with Steve from the Force Guide. Hi, right, good morning. Morning, Steve. All right, so my first question is, this year in the Vintage Collection, you're releasing Indoor Leia, Indoor Luke, Papalo, and Scout Trooper in IG-11. That is nearly every character who rides a speeder bike in live action, and yet we haven't seen a 3.75 inch scale speeder bike in years. Is there any chance we will see a Vintage Collection speeder bike soon? preferably a repaint of the 2012 Toys R Us exclusive version. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, you know, as we always say, we can't uh, confirm sure. or deny or reveal anything, uh, but it, it's definitely a good point. Uh, we've done those characters. Uh, we know that, that that particular speeder bike is important in both uh, classic and new entertainment. Uh, and so just as with everything, it's all about kind of uh, prioritization and, and doing that versus uh, we know that there are a lot of figures that fans would like to see in the line and it's kind of a choice between those things but uh, it's definitely on our radar and it's uh, good to hear that uh, your fans are, are are eager to see that come back into the line thank you awesome absolutely all righty next we've got uh george from collector's cantina all right thanks guys um my first question would be for the newly revealed black series cantina set um that's uh, you know is it everything that's that that was pictured going to be in the set like the cups that we saw and also it uh, looks like there's a change of hands for a uh, panda baba is is a uh, is a uh, that all going to be with the set yeah so each set comes with uh so let me look i wrote it down here just to make sure i wouldn't forget anything for you so uh three cups the alternate hands like you mentioned uh the two blasters for the guys, uh, Obi Wan with a saber and soft goods, plus the three bar sections. So yeah, every everything you saw comes with that. Okay, thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. Cool. Um, do we have Val from Star Wars News Net? Nope. Yeah, that, Lacey. Lacey. Per One, usual. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so first of all people freaked out about the Trapper Wolf figure last week. It was the biggest thing because we actually saw a Dave Filoni figure. Um, so being that they're so po he's so popular and I think Star Wars creators in general are popular and we've seen other brands kind of tap into that behind the scenes world. Have you, have you guys ever considered that? And as a quick follow up, will the Trapper Wolf ever get a cowboy hat? <laughs> um, so we, we actually did do a three and three quarters inch George Lucas figure back in 2007. Uh, so, which which is absolutely appropriate that George was the first Star Wars creator into the line. Um, you, you know, Trapper's a, a bit of a different story because obviously he's a character and the figure we did is a character. It just right. happens to be uh, Dave Filoni, who is obviously the creator of so much great Star Wars content. But, you know, as with everything, the reception from fans is an important barometer of whether we do similar things in the future. And it's great to hear that fans loved it. And yeah, that could impact uh, what we do in the future. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, in terms of the cowboy hat, I think I think for this figure, we were focused on staying true to the entertainment. Uh, so there's no, no current plans for that, unless, of course, for some reason, Trapper Wolf appears one. in season three <laughs> with a cowboy hat. Then it might be a different story. Great, thanks. <laughs> awesome. All right, uh, Chris from Bantha Skull. Thank you. Uh, the announcement of the Emperor's Throne received a tremendous response from the community. Many TV fan, 
TVC fans view the throne as an essential item for their collections, and they're rightfully worried that they won't be able to get it because it's an exclusive. Uh, international collectors are also worried since it's only available in Canada, the U.S., and the U.K. Could the throne see a general release at some point down the line? That's a good question. So, so first, we'll just say I know that in the past, some fans have, have said they would retire from collecting if the emperor didn't make it into the line. And so glad <laughs> wherever those fans may be that we were able to keep them in collecting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, so one clarification, uh, and it's good that we're having these fan site interviews after uh, the reveal of those items last week. So these, these are PulseCon exclusives, which I understand is a little confusing, but it's different than uh, other items we do that are exclusive to Pulse and Shop Disney. Uh, so these are really tied to that convention, and, and they are similar to our San Diego Comic-Con uh, or uh, celebration exclusives in the past. So, so these will be in the US, Canada, and UK, you're correct, these will be available tied to PulseCon through Pulse. Uh, they're available in other markets uh, at other conventions or retailers. So, uh, and, and I did look this up recently uh, without speaking to kind of every individual country. I do know that these will be available at, at places in the EU, uh, in Latin America, in Asia Pacific. And so these will get a global release. Uh, in terms of the actual set, that figure uh, is an early release of mainline. Uh, we do that uh, often. Uh, there's no current plans to release the throne outside this set. So, so this is similar to you know the the Luke three pack we did for San Diego two years ago, the Arc Trooper three pack last year, where uh, one of them is is marketed and communicated as an early release. Uh, then the other items, no current plans, but we'll see what happens in the future. Thank you. And I just want to say that I'm going to quit the hobby if we don't get a Velkin Tezari soon. <laughs> you can't keep making these threats, Chris. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, all righty. Uh, up next is John from the Star Wars TVC uh, Facebook group. All right. Thanks, guys. I uh, appreciate the invite. And Tuna, absolutely applaud you on the Velkin Tezari comment. Hey, Tuna. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, the Mithril checks all the boxes when it comes to world building. He's a character debut, an all new alien species debut, first new alien species since Mosep in 2015. He's a tertiary character and he has four accessories spanning two seasons. He's also trending as a collector favorite of the wave. Given this positive reaction by collectors, will we see more tertiary character debuts in the line? <laughs> Yataran, Shasatil, Tanaka Sisters, Velkin, <laughs> all of those, for example. Uh, well, like, like always, we can't comment on anything coming, but we love those obscure characters too. And it, it's the balancing act of, do you put out a, a Mandalorian or do you put out <laughs> pick any one of those names you said? Um, it, it is, it's the balancing act. So like we try and find ways to, to do characters like that. I mean, the Mithril, I mean, he's not even really a tertiary character. He's got screen time with with main characters and has more screen time than any of those others. So, I mean, yeah, we we love the the deep character base that is Star Wars. So finding ways to do those is important to us when we can becomes a negotiation. So awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Great. All righty. Up next is uh, Arnie from Star Wars Action News. Thanks for doing this, guys. I'm going to follow up on the question of the PulseCon exclusive throne room set. And you say there's no plans to uh, re-release the throne. Is it attached to the backdrop? And why do a backdrop rather than do like the cinema scene like you did with the cantina? Uh, it, it is not attached to the backdrop. It's, it's a separate piece. Um, but I mean, I would argue that that thing is kind of a cinema scene. It's not set up in the same format box, but when you're there, like that's that's it. And that box is, the opening of that box is an experience on itself. And the way it opens up and, and how you're greeted by the throne in there and just the way it displays, I, I think that's that's a really special thing and we're super proud of how that came together, so. Very cool, I look forward to opening it. Thanks. All righty, back to the top with Steve from the Force Guide. In the upcoming Bad Batch four pack vintage collection set, there's a figure named Clone Captain Ballas. This character appeared in the show with the same design, but was renamed to Captain Hauser. We assume this was a change by Lucasfilm later in 
production. Is there a way you can change the name pill on the figure's card before this set ships out? If not, might it be included in a running change or future re-release? Yeah, so we, we were aware of that name discrepancy. You know, as always, we appreciate the, the attention to detail. We've, we've read a lot of comments about this one. Uh, you're exactly right. Basically, you know, due to production schedules, this can sometimes occur, uh, especially when we're delivering figures. We know it's important to fans to get figures uh, closely timed to or shortly following the entertainment release. Um, and this isn't the first time it's happened. You know, I just you know from my experience back in 2016, our Jin Urso figures were all released as Sergeant Jin Urso. Uh, again, just because, you know, when we were developing the packaging, she had that rank, but ultimately didn't in the final movie. So I, I think similar to that one, it, it's too late to change the packaging right now. So that is how this figure will come out. Uh, if we do this figure again in the future, just like when we've done Jin Urso, subsequently she's been just Jin Urso, uh, we will certainly address that. Thanks. Awesome. Great. All righty. Back to George. All right. So my next question is for the uh, latest gaming greats figure, the uh, uh, Zabar figure. Um, is it, th does that come with the interchangeable head? Because like when looking at it in the package photo, the fur like from like the face and like the, the uh, body looks like it's like a, uh, a tan. But when you look at the out of the uh, out of package photos, it's all like the dark brown, like Chewbacca. Is it? It was that. Is it? Is it two different figures, or what's the deal with that? No, it's. I think that that was actually the exact same figure. Uh, I so it's just a lighting situation. I think so. No alternate head or anything in there. It's just just the one. Okay, thanks. It 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 just looked like it was something. It 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 just looked different when I was taking a look at it. So I guess it. I guess I guess maybe I was the only one that saw it. So thanks. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Yeah, I, I'm sure you're not the only one. Uh, I think just like Chris said, sometimes the lighting can, and we see this all the time, promo photos versus actually having them in hand. So I'm sure once you have it in hand, it'll it'll look like a cohesive figure. Um, Lacey, back to you. All right. So you guys have kicked off Hasbro PulseCon with like kind of three big figures or sets. Can fans expect more leading up to the event that you guys are going to release? Or is there a certain number that you guys are going to hit? Yeah. Should fans expect a lot? Absolutely. Yeah. So for our, again, there's kind of these buckets. For our PulseCon exclusives, uh, those those are the ones for, for PulseCon exclusives, just like uh, San Diego Comic-Con exclusives in the past. Uh, that being said, you know, th that's that bucket of PulseCon exclusives. We, we, do, we might see more reveals uh, and pre-orders leading up to. Uh, and certainly during PulseCon uh, for, you know, normal mainline items or retail exclusives or whatever. Uh, but yeah, there's, there, there's a lot to come in the next few years. It's been a, a great first half of the year, but there's even more to come in the back half of the year. So, uh, which we're excited about. Awesome. Can't wait. Thanks. Yeah, great. Uh, back to you, Chris. So during the May the 4th live stream, a second wave of LFL uh, 50th figures were announced. This was great news, but in the meantime, the first wave has shipped from Walmart and their handling of these items has been some of the worst we've seen, honestly. Um, are there any steps Hasbro can take to make the packaging more durable to survive the harsh big box shipping process? And we would request that if those steps are taken, it's only if it doesn't increase the cost for loose collectors. Yeah, absolutely. So we're we're breaking some news this morning. It's not huge news, but hopefully it's meaningful. We were going to save it for our next live stream, but wanted to share it now. Um, starting with items later this year, potentially in early 2022, we are moving to a thicker cardstock on both uh, vintage collection and retro items to help avoid that packaging damage. Um, so again, in a perfect world, this would happen immediately. As you guys know, there's just long processes and development timelines. And so that won't be until later this year or early next year. Um, it, and again, it's not, it's not sexy news, but, but hopefully it's welcome. And, and we want to do what we can. You know, we talk all the time. We hear you guys talk about how important the packaging is. Um, we believe that as well. Um, it, it's not free to us, uh, but uh, it, it is something that we think is important to do. Uh, and this, this particularly is not causing a price increase, um, but, right. but yeah, it's, it, it's, it's something that's important. And so we're, we're excited to see that and hopefully that helps address some of these issues. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right, back to John. Uh, and th thank you for the applause, John. That's, that's appreciated. <laughs> You're welcome, thank you. Uh, just to, to uh, coincide with that, uh, 
There's been recent frustration over the retailer exclusives with calls for Hasbro to end them entirely. Part of this frustration is difficulty in acquiring the items, and the other part is poor handling by the retailer. It's my understanding that if exclusive, the exclusive platform went away, then those figures will also go away. They wouldn't become general releases or they wouldn't get released at all. Is this true? And one solution could be to offer shared exclusivity between the retailer and Hasbro Pulse, GI Joe, Power Rangers, and Transformers licenses do this. So why couldn't the Star Wars license do this as well? Yeah, so, so a couple of different parts in there. The first part is 100% true. These are a bonus to the line. They wouldn't exist if they weren't exclusive. So, so it's not a matter of us you know, sitting in a meeting and deciding these are going to be exclusives versus mainline. They just would just go away if they weren't exclusives. And so I, it, it could be helpful feedback. I know that fans would prefer them to be mainline. That's just not an option. It could be helpful to know from fans, would they prefer them to not exist at all uh, versus being uh, these exclusives? Um, you know, as mentioned for the uh, kind of shipping issues, hopefully the thicker cardstock will handle that. Uh, we also kind of gather feedback and share that with our retail partners who, who also care about, uh, you know, within their constraints, uh, getting these items to fans in the best possible condition. Um, in terms of the shared exclusivity, uh, that's not something we're looking at. Uh, you know, just like we wouldn't kind of give pulse exclusivity to other partners, you know, we, we value the relationship with those retailers. We know they're a critical piece, well, they, they are a, an essential piece of getting the product to you guys. Um, so, so there's no current plans to share that exclusivity. We're working to improve the experience within the exclusivity. Awesome, that's all very important information for yeah. us to know. Thank you. Absolutely, no, thanks for asking. Um, Arnie, back to you. Yeah, following up on uh, the exclusive figure question, um, when you say you're trying to improve the process of the exclusivity, uh, can you go into specifics about that? And like, for example, the Walgreens exclusive 212th Battalion Clone Trooper, that was announced for pre-order a month ago and still there's mm -hmm. been no sign of it. So uh, is that something that this process you're discussing about improving the exclusivity would address? Yeah, so so I think when I mentioned that it was re related to shipping, uh, I think for the Walgreens item, this, this item will not be available for pre-order and uh, apologies, that was a miscommunication on our part. So. So happy to clarify that now. Basically, we're holding it in order to ensure a, a positive purchasing experience. And we've communicated on some of our live streams this year that uh, I, I think last year we moved to a model where everything we revealed was available for pre-order and that created some frustration. And so basically, if we're not confident that that pre-order process will be a smooth one, um, or if we're at least not you know, moderately confident, uh, then in some cases we will wait on the pre-order. Um, you know, we did that earlier this year with the first wave of original 96 with Walmart. Uh, we we revealed them in January. They went on pre-order in March. Uh, and I think from what I've read, that was a smooth experience and we weren't confident it would have been if it was in January. And then in some cases like this, we're just going to go back to how it was done for years and years and years. And this item is going to be available later this year. Uh, you know, when it shows up on in stores. Uh, and, and so that will be the time to purchase it uh, just because we're not confident it would be smooth otherwise. All right, thank you. Absolutely. All righty, back to the top with, sorry, I have to scroll in the list. Uh, Steve, back to you. All right, the upcoming Cantina Showdown set includes a Cantina Distillery, the part in the middle of the bar with the tubes and beaker type things for the first time in any Hasbro line. While it's great to see this piece, the Black Series only has a few characters to interact with it, while the three and three quarter inch line has had dozens of Cantina aliens across the last four decades. A three and three quarter inch bar was released nearly 20 years ago, but we never got the distillery. Is this something we might see considered for a vintage collection release, perhaps in a future playset, perhaps with the Tanaka sisters? Well, I, I, we can't we can't count on anything that may or may not come in, in the future. I mean, we just don't know. Um, but we we love the world building nature of TVC. So I, and for Black Series stuff, I mean, there are there are a number of characters that do work with that Cantina set. So, I, it you've got a lot of things in that question, um, but. There are there are multiple Black Series figures that work with that Black Series Cantina, uh, and it, it's a fun piece assembling those and reconfiguring it. The 
the TBC question is, I mean, TBC is about world building. So it, it's something we, we would love to do at some point, um, but I don't have anything to tell you guys about it happening, not happening. So always looking to do more though. So. Sure, and, and, and we, we get that classic response you know, but this is our opportunity to uh, express how. You know, hey, the more times it gets so. said, the better. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, we appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. George, back to you. All right. So I guess um, kind of going back to the whole exclusive thing for the retailers. And do you guys, I mean, is it the stores that control like um, the limitations and stuff like that? Or can you guys hey, say, hey, you know, for each, for each store, there's only like two you know you can only buy like two per you know exclusive or yeah. or or do you guys only control that via pulse and then all the yeah. retailers got to do their own thing yeah so so pulse is obviously hasbro's direct to consumer channel and so mm -hmm. that's that's a hasbro wing um ultimately yeah we just very simply we don't control things like limits or prices for retailers whether in store or online that's at the sole discretion of the retailer uh, we, we, like I mentioned before, we, we share, you know, frustrations with retailers when we hear them, uh, but all, because, you know, we're all working together to improve the experience, but ultimately it's at their discretion. Okay. Yeah, that's what I kind of figured, but I just, you know, I had some fans ask about that because, you know, sometimes they can't even get it. They can't even order it online and they can't even get it in the store. So it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, figured if yeah. there could be anywhere to put a limit on, that would be a good thing. Yeah, we, we are aware of the frustration and doing what we can to, to help improve the experience. Gotcha. Thanks. Absolutely. All righty. Lacey, you're up. All right. So fans were pretty excited, including myself, to see the power of the force packaging. Um, I know as a 90s kid, every time I see those retro packages from the 90s, I get really excited to collect them. Um, how do you decide which ones get that and which ones get the normal Black Series packaging? Well, in in this particular case, we kind of built the the other ones are out around that cantina. So the other figures that would work well in that scene and in that environment. I mean, that, that was an easy one to kind of make those choices. And obviously we also wanted them to be mimicking something that actually happened on that card back in a particular figure. So that was part of that decision there too. But it's in general, it's just kind of looking at all of those things and trying to build little stories and little little sets of things as we do that so we're not just picking random we're just we're going in and trying to find that little key groupings on figures awesome that's really cool um and by the way the black series packaging this year has been really awesome as well i love the new art and everything so yeah. just because yeah. retro is cool doesn't mean the new stuff isn't cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah we look, awesome. we look good too so. yeah it, it's you. our that's great to hear uh we were excited for the update and hopefully we're delivering packaging for all fans that uh, meets what they're looking for so that's great to yeah. hear awesome all right chris back to you so the announcement that more bad batch four packs were going to be made available in 2022 was a huge relief for fans that missed out however fans being fans they quickly turned to well now i have to wait so much longer than the other people that got in on the first order mm -hmm. how much longer will they have to wait than the people that were in on the initial pre-order. Yeah, not much longer. Uh, the original pre-order, I think when we announced that it was gonna be fulfilled at the end of 2021, uh, the rerun will be available in early 2022. So, you know, in a perfect world, this 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 pre-order did great. Uh, I think, you know, this was available on Amazon. I think it was their top item for the day. So we, we, we produced normal quantities of that. It was just in high demand, which is fantastic. It speaks to the, the passion of vintage fans and the strength of the line. Um, but yeah, we were excited to, to get that rerun up. It's going to be available shortly after, you know, as soon as possible. And so fans won't, won't have to wait, wait more than a couple of months, uh, hopefully to, to get their, get their hands on that one. So actually to get it in hand, not a couple months to pre-order an actual couple months to get it in hand. Exactly. Yeah. So it's not going to be available for pre-order in a couple months. It'll be available in early 2022 to order, but it'll be kind of, you know, directly fulfilled versus a several month wait between pre-ordering and fulfillment. Oh, great. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, John, back to you. Yeah. Just a similar uh, question with the Bad Batch. So the, the carded four pack was an instant bestseller on Amazon, lasted about 10 minutes before it sold out in the U.S., 
Great to hear we're getting more. And it has fans begging for the main characters to be fast-tracked into the line. Could this be where HasLab is used as a platform to fast-track figures that may not be planned in the short term? It's an interesting question, and, and HasLab is evolving. Uh, obviously, it's in a different place, you know, where it was three years ago, different brands. You know, we announced our first Black Series one, um, and we're always thinking of, of different ways to, to use HasLab while still being true to kind of the purpose uh, of HasLab. Um, I think I don't think it would get us figures any sooner. Uh, has the development times are always the same, and that's why you know the Razor Crest we launched last September, but we're fulfilling you know in the next several months. Um, so I don't think it would help us get figures sooner. Um, and again, we're kind of always just choiceful about not doing too many has labs and keep the, keeping them focused on those items that that we can't deliver any other way uh, through traditional retail. Great, thank you for that. Absolutely, uh, Arnie, you're up. Uh, sticking with the topic of Bad Batch, uh, <laughs> we've had quite a few listeners discuss that since Bad Batch is back and it's the animated style similar to the Clone Wars, that they'd like to see Bad Batch figures that fit in with the old animated style three and three quarter inch figures and are more true to the animation design. Is that at all under consideration? I know you can't announce anything, but is something in a alternate style like that something considered? Are you are you asking for Black Series or TVC stuff? I mean, I'm pretty sure they're asking for you know TVC three and three quarter. Well, it it's it's always under consideration, I mean, obviously like we're looking across the board at, at any cool things we can do. The keeping keeping kind of a standardized look to figures I think is important though, to to not have one off things in a in a collection or display so i i think and this is this is personally like i feel like for myself i don't know that i would want those i think they'd be really cool but i don't know that i would want to replace a realistic interpretation of those characters with with a stylized interpretation i mean that's that's a personal preference um but i i think that kind of in general across things like with black series like it's definitely a contributing factor i mean having like that's a realistic interpretation of those characters kind of fits in black series and i think a similar sort of approach for tvc or vintage collection would be would be where my head would go and is a super stylized version something that you think folks would be interested in you know, I look back to the aughts. I remember the Gennady Tartakovsky Clone War series where there was the subline of the very stylized angular Clone Wars figures that went with that. And then the subline of Clone Wars figures that started in 2008 and went for five years or so. So I think that, yeah, there would definitely be a place for a subline of figures. You look at what Marvel Legends is doing, they did the animated style into the Spider-Verse figures that don't necessarily fit with the uh, uh, other legends they did, but very true to the animation style. So yeah, I think there'd be a, a market for that. Okay, I mean, I, I think it's a it's a fair point. I, I think as Patrick has said before, it, it comes down a lot of times to, is that something that you would replace a new Cantina alien with? to to get a stylized version of someone that is out already so i that those are the sort of decisions that we have to deal with so all right it's, it's good feedback and it's always good to hear what the fans are thinking and a lot of times it informs what we do in the future all right thank you absolutely all righty we've got time we're, we're going to get through two more rounds uh we are going to have to move through a little more quickly but uh so we've got two questions left for each site uh so steve you're up first <laughs> Yeah, the new portrait on the PulseCon exclusive vintage collection Emperor looks great, um, but fans are wondering if the body and throne are from earlier releases or all new, whether the figure can fully sit all the way back in the chair uh, under the top and why that specific portrait instead of swappable heads. Can you talk about the general design process for the set and why it was decided to only include these pieces instead of a full play set? Okay, so uh, got a few things in there. So first off, yeah, he can fully sit back in the in the throne, underneath the overhang, all that. 
works great. Um, so the, the head portrait there is new for, for the figure. Uh, he does use a partially existing body with a new plastic hood and belt. So he is updated that way. Um, the Black Series one came with multiple heads for their offering. Uh, we wanted to lean into the world building aspect for, for vintage collections. So the one head instead of swappables made more sense there. And, and giving things like a, the, the background in that set, I think you can see in some of the photos is swappable or flippable. So you can display with the space battle going on outside and with the, or just clean star field. So I think those sort of things and in, in focusing on the world building part there is is more in our minds for TVC stuff. Thank Alrighty, you. George, uh, second to last round, take it away. All right, um, will the uh, Trapper Wolf figure be put on the Black Series? Quick and easy. Uh, the well. No current future plans for that. Okay. Um, yeah, this is one is a, not a possibility. Yes, no plans for it though. Okay, sounds good. Thank. Cool, Lacey, take it away. Awesome. Uh, building off of Steve's question because he got a great answer um, <laughs> for the emperor figure, which I didn't realize everyone's looking for the throne. That's really cool. Um, are you guys planning on doing more of these environmental type background world building pieces later this year and? How do you decide which figures get that treatment? Because the emperor is obviously one that he has a throne. Of course, it makes sense that he gets one. But how do you decide that? Well, it, I think it worked well. So I mean, I'd, I'd love to do more of them. Um, if there's anything you guys would love to see personally, like that you think fits in that, let us know. Uh, no, no plans for any of that stuff to, to talk about. But I, as far as how we make those decisions, I think it's just about it's about speaking to different story beats and, and celebrations that are happening and, and finding ways to bring innovation into the line. So the yeah. emperor in the in that set in particular, the way that box opens, I think you guys will you'll love kind of the the opening experience for that box. It's really it's really an amazing thing. So and a million fans just cried out that you said open the box. <laughs> Fair. Fair. <laughs> uh, Thank you. you. <laughs> Chris, Bantha Skull, go yeah, for it. I'll, I'll try to abridge this question in the interest of time. So just to make sure we provide you with good feedback, um, BC-68, the Echo Base Trooper, was one of the most requested figures from TVC1 to be repacked. And we're trying to figure out if that's loudness of a few fans or actual popular demand. Have the pre-sales met expectations on that figure? Just a pass fail, you could? <laughs> um, yeah, so we would give it a pass. Um, so it's a great suggestion from the fan community. Uh, it's one we were excited to get in. Uh, again, I think we mentioned this when we revealed it, but it wasn't included in the From the Vault vote that we did at FanFest because it was already in the plans. Uh, and so we, we heard you guys loud and clear. It, it's been in the plans for, for months and months. Um, and, and yeah, the, the pre-order, uh, it was a pass. So we're Great. excited to see that. Thank you. So, so keep the suggestions coming. Awesome. John, you're up next. Uh, more recently, it seems new figure card art is not seen by collectors until they drop at retail or they are posted by Hasbro to social media just before the figures are found at retail. Uh, the highly anticipated The Clone Wars Ahsoka and Maul Wave created a frenzy online with collectors clamoring to find out the VC numbers once they were spotted at retail. Can we see cardbacks revealed uh, when figures are revealed and also learn their VC numbers? Just a suggestion with yeah. other opportunities to give that information out. Yeah, no, it's interesting. So in, in some cases, when we reveal vintage figures, we do also reveal the card art. Um, but, but as with pipeline reveals, we're trying to do what we can to give the fan community visibility earlier. Um, and so in those cases where we don't reveal the packaging, it's because we're trying to reveal the figures sooner uh, and give the fan community kind of a, a glimpse uh, into what's coming with the actual product. Uh, and we just honestly don't have final packaging at that point. Uh, you know, as with all things, let us know if the fans would prefer to see these once they're kind of with final packaging. Uh, we always try to reveal that on Pulse, uh, but that's certainly something we can take into account. Uh, regarding the vintage collection numbers, those can shift around honestly. Um, we, we can certainly think about it. It's good feedback. 
I, I think the, the thing we wouldn't want to do is create any confusion if we announce one vintage number and then that number changes and and we know that those vintage numbers are important. And so we kind of don't want to create that that confusion, but but it's good feedback. Thank you. That, that was for the super nerds. No, no not at all. <laughs> all righty, Arnie, bring round four to a close. Yeah, now I know you mentioned earlier and have said before that you guys don't set pricing on figures, but lately there's been a kind of across the board, all retailer uh, increase in price on Black Series figures. And so I wondered if that was going to have any impacts on the line overall, the number of figures made, the thought of, you know, now uh, people's wallets are going to be a little bit thinner because of uh, the cost of buying a wave of figures again. Yeah, no. So, you know, in terms of quantity and quality, we're, we're committed to delivering the highest quality and the current quantity uh, for fans. The price increases won't, won't affect that. Uh, basically, it's just a situation like most other companies kind of in a lot of different industries, just in the current world, the current climate, we've seen significant increases in material costs, you know, there's freight costs as well, just everything's going up because of the current situation in the world. Um, and so we're taking a lot of actions to offset those higher costs. Uh, but we are, we know, we, we, we've announced we are implementing price increases in the second half of this year, which we've communicated to retailers. Um, and so those will kind of affect uh, all product lines, uh, but yeah, it won't impact the quality or quantity of the figures. All right, thank you. Absolutely. All righty, we're doing well on time. We'll do this again. Uh, we'll kind of move through a little more quickly, but Steve, kick off our final round. All right, newly sculpted, <clears throat> newly sculpted figures in both the Vintage Collection and the Black Series have been incredible lately with sculpting and engineering that are light years beyond what we've seen before. However, those are mixed in with a lot of reuse tooling from many years ago. We know that new tooling is a significant expense and reuse is part of the business. But with the success of both lines lately, will we be seeing an increase of new tooling next year so we can set aside sculpts from a decade ago? Yeah, so, so a few quick things there. Um, one, we can't really comment on whether tooling next year will be higher or lower the same. Uh, in terms of setting aside sculpts from a decade ago, we, we have done some of this. Uh, last year, obviously, we announced the new clone trooper, the new uh, stormtrooper. And so we do certainly do that where it makes sense. Obviously, those take the place of a brand new figure. And so we're, we're choiceful about, about where to do that and where to make sense. Um, and then, yeah, in terms of the reused tooling, again, those it's not the case. You know, you talked about the significant expense. Those aren't taking the place of a newly tooled figure those are additional. We, we wouldn't do anything else in that place. Uh, and so again, I think the feedback is would fans rather not have those figures that involve reuse tooling at all? Because uh, we know obviously we'd rather have all newly tooled figures, but that's just not in the cards. Um, so that would be good feedback to get from, from your fans. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, George, final question. All right, so um, I know you guys brought in the whole rocker ankle thing for some of the figures recently would you guys ever consider like a, a uh, uh, thigh swivel for the figures well to go ahead and give kind of like more um, articulate we we have that in all of our our modern figures so it, it's already in there in in them okay yeah that was like one of my fans asked that question to me so I just wanted to go ahead and just kind of ask that so thank you yeah yeah. the best possible response yes george already we're, there we're doing it immediately uh <laughs> there we go all righty lacy final round well i hope to get the same response right now all <laughs> right so um our fans and listeners have loved the lucasfilm 50th collection and all the different figures that come with that the big question is are we going to see sequel trilogy figures that's the question we always get <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a good question. Uh, you know, without revealing anything or announcing sure, anything, sure. I, I will say the Lucasfilm 50th, it's it's kind of, you know, a look at the past uh, and oh, kind of the, the history of Lucasfilm the first 50 years. Technically, the sequel trilogy is part of that. It is more recent. Uh, and so without saying anything one way or the other, the focus of that has been on kind of the history of Lucasfilm and the past. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely. No problem. Chris, you're up. So my other questions have already been asked and answered by other members. Can, can I ad-lib one? Absolutely, Chris. 
Okay, so the Black Series uh, Cantina Showdown, the Panda Baba, the head is much better scaled than the TVC version. It's much more accurate to the prop, and he includes the correct uh, blaster. Uh, I don't know how to pack just as a question, but uh, if you were ever to do the distillery, could you consider retooling the head on Panda Baba and giving him the correct blaster as a pack-in? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We can Since I got you such a short answer, can I have the Razor Crest behind you? <laughs> uh, Razor yeah. Crest. <laughs> it's it's a good suggestion, and honestly, those are the things we try to look for when if if we were to do a Panda Baba again. Like we love doing those meaningful updates uh, that you know kind of are are some small updates. So so that's great feedback. Great, thank you. Awesome, absolutely, John, you are up. All right. Um, bo the Mithral, and Offworld Jawa all have four accessories. It's great seeing more than the average two accessories included with new figures and harkens back to TVC 1.0, so thank you. Uh, is it possible to get another Quill in a future release that includes separate goggles and welding torch accessories so he can wear them to work on the Crest, Pram, on IG-11, uh, and, uh, you know, someday hopefully riding a Blurg? That would be fun. Um... I mean, he's a character that isn't currently participating in anything, though. So it's it's tough to prioritize a second version of him over uh, a new character. And it's that same struggle as, as always. It's, if, if we could wait until all the content's over and then include all the accessories with every figure, we we'd, would do that. But in this case, it's like we wanted to get him out and and then we want to bring more newness to the line. So I'd say it's unlikely that you'll see another one of him anytime soon, but I don't want to rule anything out for the future. Sounds good. That's fair. Thank you. Great. Awesome. Arnie, bring us home. All right. Quick question to finish it up. Uh, I love that in the Cantina set coming out for the PulseCon exclusive that uh, Panda Baba has both the flipper hands and the claw hands. Now, we know there's going to be a regular release of him down the line. Are both hands going to be uh, with that regular release as well, or are the flipper hands part of the PulseCon exclusivity? Uh, this is this is Eric's figure. I, I think there's some level of exclusivity to the, the PulseCon release. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that is. Patrick might be able to speak to that, but um, I can't. Arnie, we can definitely find that out and get back to you. Okay, thank you. Absolutely, no problem. Um, I think that brings us to a close. We, we're almost on time, which is great. Um, and we just close it out. I think we say this almost the exact same thing every time, uh, but it remains to be true. Uh, just thank you guys for spending time with us. Uh, it's, it's a great way for us to spend our time. It's fun. We get to ignore our meetings and and just chat Star Wars. Um, and it's also just really helpful for us to obviously the questions you guys ask some of them are, are framed as questions but it's just great to get feedback on what the fans want and our thinking and what's top of mind and so we appreciate it and i'm already looking forward to the next time we uh, get together thanks for taking the time for us thanks so much appreciate yeah it. thanks guys appreciate yeah. it thanks, thanks you guys have a good day you too. Bye.